Isn't that what the UK women want? 50-50. Like, I'm an independent woman. I don't know who's spreading these lies. That's what we think. I don't know why women are doing this to us. I don't want to be independent. 70% of the men who try and ask me out on dates are married. I've seen so many diaspora girls try to avoid a married men, but always ended up with a married man and later find out that they are married. We've all accidentally been in one of those situations. I think you're enjoying being single. 100%. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when I go out, I don't pay for anything. It's Check. fantastic. The UK men are stingy. That's what I've heard. I didn't agree or but disagree. what do you think? <laughs> <laughs> he had been my provider. So when he went to prison, I was like, oh my gosh, what am I going to do? And it was deported to Italy because that's where he was born. Yeah. And then you were like, I will not let you go to Italy. Let's move to Ghana. Him being in prison, I had become so independent. Having someone there all the time was a bit like, mm. like give me space. People felt like they knew no, you the guys. relationship, knew us. They were seeing what we wanted them to see. So, yeah. How much money you come to Ghana the apartment that I have now, I could never afford it in the UK. I could sell one wig and make my rent. One, one wig. wig? One wig. I get fresh fruit, fresh vegetables, I get sun. There's AC in the yeah. club. We don't have AC in the club in the UK. Really? So it's hot? It's hot. Everyone is sweating. Wow. I was flabbergasted. You see people with Range Rovers, Mercedes, Audis. It's all financed. Here, if someone's got that car, they bought it. Cash. Do you have any regret? I feel like seeing so many people that look like me i can go to the bank people look like me i go to the market people look like like everywhere i go i get in a taxi people look like me it's comforting mm. ghana is the perfect place to live how you want to live if you want to live a very humble and affordable life you can do that if you want to live visually you can in the uk things are very gray here you really see color designs mm. and it will inspire you Hello guys and welcome back again to another amazing episode and this is the Diaspora Transition episode where we have dialogue with diasporan who decided to leave the diaspora behind, either being the US, UK and currently living here on the continent and uh, today we do have here someone very special. She's been on your screen, if you don't know her, I don't know about you, maybe you're under a rock. Uh, she's been on the screens in the UK, she's a public personality, an actress, also a content creator uh her story went global i know you all might have you know heard about it but if you haven't i have her here uh, on the show to be able to have a dialogue with her asking her why she decided to even come to ghana in the first place and the beginning of her journey so without further ado we have manka in the building welcome on the show hello thank you for having me thank you for coming um as i said i've been watching you for a long time your first video I ever saw was with wadamaya with your um, partner then you you moved uh from the UK, you got deported to Italy. You didn't want that to happen, so came uh, with him to Ghana. And I saw that story. Fast forward, it's been almost four years. Four yeah, that's years. crazy. Yeah, that's crazy. So um, people are watching for the first time. They might not have seen that video, know who you are. Can you please briefly introduce yourself to the uh, people watching for the first time? Okay, so as he's mentioned, my name is Manka, and I moved from the UK to Ghana with my boyfriend as he said he went to prison he got deported to italy and i said i'm not going to live in italy mm -hmm. but i'll move to ghana mm -hmm. we had previously come on holiday in 2016 so we literally just moved to ghana and we hadn't really planned to come to ghana so we literally had no plan on like anything so i was like let's just start documenting our story he wasn't into it at first and then we literally posted a video and it just blew up overnight. And then, yeah, yeah that was how I came on your screen. Where we are currently filming this episode is called Jendu Place. Jendu Place is a co-working space located in Accra, Ghana, East Lagoon. Uh, if you're a diaspora, you have a remote job and you want to move down here, plug and play, literally, uh, this place is the place for you. They have um, in internet, 24-hour uh, internet, electricity as well. So you can get to enjoy the facilities here. And when you get here, tell them you're coming from Web Nation Africa, you might get a discount. I want to be able to dive into your story a bit. Okay. Your story. My story. Your upbringing, right? right? Where are you from? Where are your parents from? Let's so talk about it. Both my parents are Cameroonian. Okay. Um, so yeah, I'm Cameroonian. You know, recently, yeah. I've been having... People ask you, are you Ghanaian? This is what happens. So people mm -hmm. will hear my accent, I'm guessing. They'll be like, oh, you're not from here. And I'm like, oh, no, I'm not from here. So they'll be like, where are you from? And I'm like, Cameroon. And they're like, no, you're not. You don't sound like you're from Cameroon. And I'm like, oh, yeah, my accent is from the UK, but I'm Cameroonian. 
Would you not say that you're Cameroonian? Yeah, I'm um, sorry, Ghanaian. Ghanaian. Yeah, I would. Would you not say that you're Ghanaian? Yeah. I, like, they want me to say I'm like. From the UK. Yeah, but I'm not. Yeah. Why? Why do we think like that? I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. I'm not from where my accent is from. Mm-hmm. I'm Cameroonian. Mm-hmm. So, you're both parents. Both parents are Cameroonian. Well, you, you were born in the UK or I was, Cameroon? No, I was born in the UK. In the UK. Wow. So, they, they migrated from Cameroon to yeah. the UK. Yeah. Okay. When was that? My mum moved to the UK like early 90s. Okay. Mm-hmm. And then they, you give, they gave birth to you in the yeah. UK. Okay. Now, upbringing, like, did you grow up with your parents? Yeah. So, uh, I, I grew up with my mom. Mm-hmm. My mom and dad split up. So, I grew up with my mom. And then, um, yeah, it was just me and her for 10 years. And then she had twins. Mm-hmm. So, I've got two sisters. And, yeah, it's just always been us four mm-hmm. I mean she's married now but like for growing up it was us four mm-hmm. and yeah can't complain about my childhood yeah so what was it so you, it was single mom you only your mom yeah. what was your dad at that time um he he still lived like in the same area but mm. he'd moved on mm. I see my childhood mm-hmm. I would describe I've had a happy childhood mm. I'm a very like the way that my mom has brought me up I'm a very very independent person um I've always been a very confident person. The, my mum has always been very business-minded from when I was very, very young. So mm-hmm. I feel like I like to have my hands dipped in different things. Mm-hmm. I like to always try out new things. Where I'm in not, the UK did you grow up? I, in a town called Reading. Reading? Yeah. Okay. Everyone thinks London, but I live yeah. outside of London, mm-hmm. Reading. Mm-hmm. Growing up, was it, was it like a, a black community, a white community where you grew up? Reading is a, it's a very, very diverse town. Mm-hmm. So I've always grown around different ethnicities I mean I went to school in a predominantly white area but I lived in like a predominantly like mixed area Mm -hmm. so I've Mm -hmm. always had a lot of different people around me Mm. so your mom being an entrepreneur what what was she doing for that so when I was uh like from the age of like four five she used to have like this is obviously back back in the day she had a shop um that um, allowed you to like do international calls so she'd get people call like uh, like pay phones I guess yeah. and they would like call home call Africa call Asia and then after that she got two more mm-hmm. of those so she had three and then she changed them into like African food like she, a restaurant no 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 she was just selling like yam fish oh, okay like, the, raw, import, the raw stuff yeah she would import things over and then she'd sell it at one point she had a hairdressers and then now she like imports and exports mm-hmm. goods from Nigeria and yeah, from Ghana. Nigeria and Ghana. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's amazing. So, so talk to me. You you stayed with her during your childhood. To what point did you leave your parents? When I was eighteen, I moved out. Eighteen, you yeah. moved out. Okay. You moved out from your your family, your mom's home. Yeah, but I don't mm-hmm. live. I didn't move far. Like I just around. I've always been around. Yeah. Okay. So your mom is like your best friend. I would say. Mm. Now she is. Yeah. But I feel like when I was younger, yeah. I always used to be like, oh, we're friends, we're friends. And she'd be like, no, we're not friends. We're not friends. I'm your mum. Now, she calls me all the time mm-hmm. saying that we're friends, we're friends, we're friends. <laughs> See how things change. Yeah. So talk to me. Um, what, what did you major on in steps of career? You know. So mm-hmm. I always thought that I... It's actually so funny mm-hmm. because I, I really wanted to be... Um, <laughs> I wanted to be a criminal psychologist. I've always been interested in like the minds of like criminals, why criminals become serial killers, why people commit murders, how really? things. Yeah, I'm, I was always into that, but I don't like to study. Mm. I don't like. To, I really don't. I like to see an end goal and be able to determine my own steps to get there. Mm. Studying requires other people to determine mm-hmm. my progress mm-hmm. and I don't really like you don't that, like that. I see. so instead of me pursuing that I went with what I'm good at so I've always been into beauty and hair um, when I was like 16 17 I used to like I I, I realized about like AliExpress all these like Chinese companies and I bought hair for I just decided to just buy hair for myself and people were like oh my gosh your hair's amazing 
and they'll be like, where did you get it from? So at first I was just, you know, giving out the link. Then I said, am I a fool? <laughs> then I just branded it. Um, and then I would just charge a little bit extra to mm. make a bit of profit. And mm-hmm. then, yeah, that's how I, I started to sell hair. I still do that now mm-hmm. because because it's something that I'm passionate about myself. Mm-hmm. It doesn't feel like a chore. Yeah. I'm going to buy hair for myself. Mm-hmm. So if I stumble across a company that is very good mm-hmm. and can give me good wholesale deals, mm-hmm. I will sell them. I like that. So that's what you were doing. You were just distributing their hair? Yeah, so then... Um, in 20 mm-hmm. so my boyfriend went to prison in 2017 mm-hmm. and in 2017 I was I was 21 years old mm-hmm. and we had been together at that point for like a little bit over a year mm-hmm. I want us to go back to where you were selling the hair we will come wait, to that point no, wait, wait. Go ahead. we will go back yeah. um, so when he went to prison mm-hmm. He had been my provider. Okay. So I was like, oh my gosh, what am I going to do? Mm-hmm. I need something to do. His sentence was supposed to be like five years. So what, what am I going to do? I was like, I, I want to open a salon. Okay. Okay. So it's like, I already sell the hair. Mm-hmm. I'm going to open a salon. So before I moved to Ghana, I had a salon. Mm. In the UK? Mm-hmm. I see. I see. Now, let's, let's go back a little bit. I let's want to be able to understand it, right? Understand. So you, you started shopping online mm-hmm. hair mm-hmm. to your friends, mm-hmm. like almost drop shipping it. Yeah, basically. Adding the profit, yeah. right? And now you realize that, I mean, your guy went to prison. How old were you then? And what was the circumstances around you and him before that happened? Before prison? Yeah, before prison. So to be honest, when, I, when we, me and him first started speaking, mm-hmm. because... You were 21. How did you guys meet? Our town is is big, but it's very small. Like all of the black people know all the black know people. Each other. So I actually met him at church. 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 Oh, interesting. Very interesting. But I didn't really, I didn't really mind him. He was just. What did he say to you? He didn't really speak to me, but mm-hmm. I just always felt like he, he just looked mean. <laughs> yeah, he looked mean. So I just didn't mind him. He didn't seem to mind me either. So mm-hmm. it. That, and that was when I was like 15. So how we then, how it ended up in a relationship is mm-hmm. crazy. Four years after. Yeah, crazy. Wow. Well, so you, you started dating at what, 19, 20 years? Yeah. Okay. And then at what age did he go to prison? When 21. I was 21, yeah. 21. Wow. So you were still doing the hair thing when he went to prison? No, I, I, when he went to prison, I had stopped doing everything. He was my provider. Oh, okay. I didn't do anything. Okay. When so, you started dating, he started taking care of you. Yeah, so you didn't, you didn't, I didn't need do, to work I didn't anything. do anything. Oh. He provided everything. Okay. And then when he went, it was like a shock of, oh my gosh, what am I going to... You were hit with like reality. Gonna, <laughs> gonna, you have to take care of I'm yourself. I'm going to pay my now. bills. Yeah. Wow. wow. So then, yeah, that's when he started to... Mm-hmm. No, I started to realise, okay, I need to do something. Let me go back to what I'm good at, but let me try and do it on a bigger scale. So you opened a salon. Yeah. How long did the salon was open for? It, not long. Yeah. He went to prison in 2017. I opened it in 2018. Mm-hmm. And by 2019, moved to Ghana. Okay. Wow. So leaving that so at behind. At least he just left it behind. Wow. So talk to me, because I heard your story. He went to prison for two years. Yeah. And then was deported to Italy because that's where he was born. Yeah. And then you were like, I will not let you go to Italy. I would rather come to, to Ghana with you. Yeah, because he obviously Italy is not that far from the UK. Yeah. So he was like, oh, we can just do long distance. And I was like, I'm, I'm not doing long distance. Okay. I've done long distance for the past two years. Yeah. So I'm, I will move with you, mm-hmm. but I'm not moving to Italy. Mm. Let's move to Ghana. But then you're from Cameroon. Yeah. So why didn't you say, oh, let's move to Cameroon? Because yeah. my mum had been doing business in Ghana at that point for like five years. So she imports like mainly like electricals and household goods from the UK to Ghana and she sells them in Ghana. Before she was doing it in Ghana, she was doing it in Cameroon, but the economy wasn't... Okay. It wasn't great. So Ghana made more sense. Ghana made more sense. Okay, so you guys came to Ghana to do the same to help your mom's business. Is that so? No, 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 no. Like, Mm -hmm. in fact, his mom actually does the same thing also. Okay. But she she just sends different types of goods. But... Mm -hmm. It wasn't even about them. It was just the fact that if they are choosing mm-hmm. to do business mm-hmm. here, mm-hmm. then it must mean that there's potential for here. us to have a good life here. I see. What was that conversation like? What, with my with mom? With your partner? 
Oh, with him? Mm-hmm. No, it was literally, I literally said, yeah, I'm not moving to Italy, but I'll move to Ghana. Mm-hmm. And he was like, are you sure? Mm-hmm. And I was like, yeah. And he was like, cool. I see. I was like, I'll book the flights. Yeah. So what was, what was it like when you stepped foot in Ghana for the first time? So when we moved to Ghana, that wasn't my first time. Mm-hmm. My first time was with him in 2016. That's when we first came to Ghana. Well, not him, but me. Mm-hmm. And can you imagine the whole time I was in Ghana for like 10 days, mm-hmm. the whole time I was in Kaswa. Kaswa. And I thought that like, wow, this is so nice. Mm-hmm. I went to West Hills Mall and I was like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. I didn't even experience like a it's crowd. Like, gone. No. Really? So I guess 2019 was the first mm-hmm. time I experienced. And the most significant thing for me, the first thing, mm-hmm. as you, when you messaged me, you told me that you saw me leaving yeah. the club. Yeah, yeah. The first thing that I experienced was I went into Twist mm-hmm. and I was like, oh my goodness, the AC there's AC in the yeah. club. We don't have AC in the club in the UK. Yeah, really? So it's hot. It's hot. Everyone is sweating. I've never, I had never experienced AC in the club. Wow. I was flabbergasted. And I was like, this is, this is the Africa that they talk about. Mm-hmm. I was like, this is amazing. Mm-hmm. Mm. So what did they tell you about, you know, the, the Africa, you know? I, I just, obviously, you know how people just say like, oh, the poverty. Mm-hmm. And, you know, growing up as well, mm-hmm. I had built up a perception of, like, Africa from, like, you know, relatives always calling and asking for money. Mm. Honestly, I feel like so many people, like, people that have money in Africa, yeah. they've got way more money than people. In the UK? Yeah. Really? 100%. Do you disagree? What? I agree. Oh, I <laughs> but I'm saying, what, what have you seen that made you come to that kind of con- conclusion? First of all, there's no such thing as oh, I'm financing my car. Yeah. Financing your car is the norm in the UK. You see people with Range Rovers, Mercedes, Audis. It's all financed. Here, if someone's got that car, they bought it. Cash. Cash. Plus duty. Plus duty. (laughs) Yeah. Wow. So what changed in your mind when you begin to kind of see all these differences? I just think I really enjoy, like, seeing so many people that look like me. Mm-hmm. I like the fact that I can go to the bank, people look like me. Mm-hmm. I go to the market, people look like, like everywhere I go, I get in a taxi, people look like me. Mm. It's just, it's nice, it's mm. comforting. Mm. Mm. I see. You don't know, get that in the UK? No, nah, not really. I mean, it's, it's so diverse. I mm. like the lack of diversity. Mm-hmm. I see. I see. Now, let's, let's talk about four years. Um, how long did you stay after you moved in 2016? Two years. Two years? Together with your partner. So, about a year, mm-hmm. like a year, we broke up. A year into it. A we year were, into moving to Ghana? Yeah. Oh, I see. Probably lockdown had something to do with that because we were driving each other crazy. Really? Yeah, but yeah, we broke up. I moved out got a different apartment and I was just living my life wow but I feel like obviously ever since like Mm. that time we had we've spoken about it and we've spoken about how our experiences were very very different my experience and his experience it wasn't the same so I was having the time of my life and he was like going through it like he was not having a good experience so I feel like Certain things made me kind of impatient. I was like, why not, like, why not enjoying this amazing place that mm. we're in? Like, what was going through his mind at that time? I just feel like, I, I feel like, I mean, he, he didn't have any time to adjust. Mm-hmm. So he literally came out of prison. They put him on the plane. We stayed in Italy for one night. And the next day we were in Ghana. We, in Ghana. Mm. So it's like he hasn't been like outside in... So there was just so much to process. Yeah. And then I think as well... Because I, um, like, from when he went to prison, I had gotten straight into, like, I need to make money, entrepreneur, I need to make money. I literally got to Ghana, and I was like, who can I sell hair to? Mm. So, like, straight away, I was able to, like, find customers. And because I'm a very, like, outgoing person, I can speak to someone, and it's like, I've known that person for a long time. So I had no problem speaking to people, finding customers, whereas he's naturally quite reserved, he opens up to people after he's spoken to people for some time. So he, like, it was a bit harder for him to, like, put himself out there and actually find out mm-hmm. what he wants to do mm. with his life. 
what was some of the challenges you guys went to get as a couple, uh, as a whatever? You lived together, right? Yeah. First year. What was we, some of the challenges? Well, I mean, not only did we live together, mm-hmm. but it was lockdown. So we came in December 2019, and then by like February 2020, it was lockdown. So we were inside all day, every day. So you mean day. like you spent time in jail with him in the third year <laughs> almost no, no. like because he was in prison for two years yeah came out of prison and it's locked down for a year yeah and then you had to stay in the same house with him for another year yeah almost like three years uh, in prison i guess so uh, how, what was the challenge you, you went, went to? i just feel like we like i feel like from him being in prison mm-hmm. I had become like so independent mm. and so used to my own company that having someone there all the time was a bit like, mm. like give me space. And I see. he couldn't give me space because it was lockdown. There was nowhere to go. Mm. There was nothing to do apart from just be in each other's space. I even mm. started jogging. 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 In the heat, jogging. Jogging. Interesting. So, so you separated, got your own apartment. You yeah. also did the same thing. And you guys, you were creating content together, but that changed. Yeah, so when we like broke up, we stopped creating mm-hmm. content, mm-hmm. which was, it was more so like, because people were so invested. Mm-hmm. Like people felt like they knew no, the guys. relationship, mm-hmm. knew us so well. Like they were failing to understand that you, they were seeing what we wanted them to see. To see yeah. If we're arguing, we're not, I'm not going to be holding up the camera. If we're, you know, if we're like upset, crying, I'm not going to be holding up the camera. You only see 20 minutes of what we would like you to exactly, see, yeah. edited content. But people felt like they knew us so, like to the point where he wanted to carry on because it was genuinely like, you know, a good source of income and stuff. But I was like, nah, mm. for my peace of mind, mm-hmm. I need to try and separate mm. from this. So talk to me, what happened after you separated? Um, after we separated, mm-hmm. so I came, I went back to the UK like a few, like months later. Months later, he went back to the UK. And then um, he ended up getting arrested again for obviously coming back to the UK really? when he wasn't supposed to. And they made him do like the rest of his sentence. Luckily, the rest of his sentence was like five months. Mm-hmm. But him going back to prison, it's like I snapped back into like previous prison girlfriend mode. Mm. And yeah, we, we basically ended up getting back together when he got out. Mm-hmm. And then, yeah, we were together from then. When did he come out? September 2022. Mm-hmm. Okay, so you were together from 2022? Yeah. Okay, and we're in 2024. How is it looking? Oh, we broke up. You broke up? When? <laughs> I told you there was going to be surprises in here. We broke up last year. 2023? Mm. Last year mm-hmm. in May. Last year, May. Now, People are watching this, right? Yeah. You're like, you literally sacrificed your life, left your salon behind, jump on a flight with him to Ghana, sacrifice your time and energy with all this investment, and then you break up. What, when people say that, what, what runs through your mind? When, when, you know? Yeah, people say that to me all the time, but I genuinely don't see it. Like, the mm-hmm. way that people will say it is mm-hmm. obviously with negative connotations. They'll say, like, you wasted your time. How are you going to get that time back? But... Mm-hmm. I'm the kind of person Mm -hmm. that if I'm going to do something, I'm going to put my all into it. Mm. So it would, like, there was no question, like, I'm moving. There's no, oh, let's try and make this work. Like, it's I'm moving Mm -hmm. or it's not happening. Mm. And even though to some people it may seem like a waste of time, like, I'm literally sat in Ghana right now. I would never have come to Ghana. If not that circumstances. Yeah, if not for those circumstances. Mm. And it's like I came to Ghana and I fell in love with Ghana. And Do you have any regret? I don't have any regrets. Mm-hmm. I feel like everything genuinely happens for a reason. Um, mm, if I have any regrets, mm-hmm. it's the way that I handled certain situations. Not the situations themselves, but the way that I could have handled certain situations. Can you just better. give me one scenario? It's just like, for example, I mm-hmm. felt like I didn't give him enough grace. 
um, enough what? Enough grace. I didn't extend enough grace to the fact that he's literally come out of prison and I'm expecting him to be the exact same boyfriend that he was before Mm -hmm. and just get back to how things were. It's impossible to expect that from someone who's literally spent two like two years are you trying to say he changed he he did change I feel like prison is going to change you Mm. like for example one of the things that used to really annoy me that he would do is he would always ask me like ask like he wouldn't I felt like he had stopped taking initiative and I used to get so frustrated. I'm like, just if you're gonna do it, just do whatever you want to do. But like he always asked Don't me for ask approval. Me. Yeah, like he was asking me for mm. approval. Until one day, he was like, he said to me, he was like, Manka, I have been in prison for two years under circumstances where I was not able to make any decisions for myself. Someone would tell me when I could leave myself. Someone tells me when I go shower. Someone tells me when I go to work. Someone tells me when I come back. Like, someone tells me what time to eat. The same thing every day, the same routine. Someone is telling me when I can go through this door, when I can go through that door. So it's like, in his mind, he's so used to having to ask Mm. for permission or ask to do certain things or ask if this is allowed that it's just become a habit. How did that make you feel as a woman? I felt horrible. Woman, you know, and being at your man asking you for everything. See, when it was that, I just felt like, ugh, like, I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't, I want to be the one to ask. Mm. But obviously when you flip it and you see it as, this is somebody that had to ask, that is now forced into this habit, then it it made me feel really bad. Mm. Wow. This is an interesting story. I think I'm trying so much to move away from that, but we always keep circling back into it because it's, it's, it's so much a part of your life. Yeah, it's a lot. And in the public eye. It's a lot. How, how is he feeling now? I mean, you guys have separated. I saw you on a show just like three months ago. Yeah, but... What was that about? Honestly speaking, with yeah. that show, mm. that show was supposed to be couples mm-hmm. giving poor advice right. on like how to have a successful relationship, yeah. right? But he started asking us questions and we ended up basically talking about our story. Okay. And we ended up not even giving him any kind of advice. He was just yeah. so into our story. Mm-hmm. Um, but we like we filmed that ages ago. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But the, the thing about me and him is like, even right now, like we're really good friends. Really? Like we're really good friends. Because what you guys have been together is like, yeah, I just it's feel hard like, to separate from that. Yeah, I feel like, like relationship wise Mm -hmm. something doesn't work Mm. but friendship wise like he's the best Mm. we have a really good relationship Mm -hmm. I like that we will will probably circle back into that I know but let's just talk about you even being here alone and trying to maneuver your way through this environment here in Ghana even business wise yeah how are you holding up so Ghana is literally like a breath of fresh air to me Mm. um in 2023 I just, my life was so like mundane. Mm -hmm. It was just so depressing. Really? Yeah, it was so depressing. What is the details on that? It was just like, it was just, Mm -hmm. the weather was bothering me. Like, it's like when you want to have social interactions with people, people are working, people are busy. Or finally when everyone's free, it's raining. Like there's just always something. And I just remembered how, like happy I was in Ghana and I was like yeah by the end of the year I'm, I'm moving back mm. and ever since I've been here like it's just been nice like it made it very difficult for you to live in the UK after seeing what Ghana has yeah in store for it you. made it so hard like I just mm. it's just so sad like once like when I first went back to the UK I was so happy mm-hmm. but once the like friends and family seeing everyone had worn off then it was like oh now what and literally, like, I came back August mm-hmm. 2021. By December 2021, I was back in Ghana. Mm. And it was... In just a period of two, three months. Yeah. And then, obviously, I, I came back and I had to mm-hmm. stay in the UK for a bit. But mm-hmm. I just kept thinking, I just want to go back. I want to go back. I Someone would ask, what about the economic, you know, situation? Or even, like, in terms of making money in, in Ghana compared to the UK? I feel like the trick is... Mm. You, if if you can master mm-hmm. making money mm-hmm. in pounds, dollars, euros, and bring that money to Ghana, 
you're fine. Mm. You have a fantastic life. Mm. Like, so obviously I sell hair online. Mm -hmm. So I sell, I sell in pounds and like I ship it over. So like I could sell one wig and make my rent. Mm. In Ghana? Yeah, in Ghana. Yeah. I could literally sell one, one wig, wig. One wig. How much is the wig going for? <laughs> Or how much is my rent? <laughs> <laughs> That's true. <laughs> yeah. And most things that I want, I can get them in Ghana. And I can afford to get them in Ghana. There are mm -hmm. certain things that I wasn't I couldn't afford mm -hmm. to do in the UK. Yeah. I couldn't afford to live comfortably by myself. Like mm. the apartment that I have now, I couldn't I couldn't I could never afford it in the UK. Ever. Really? No, never. Mm -hmm. So it's way bigger. Way bigger, way cheaper. Mm. Um, nicer and yeah like I get mm. fresh fruit fresh vegetables like I get sun I just can't I can't yeah. complain you're obviously having a blast I I'm saw you come out time. of the club at 2am oh, <laughs> do you know one yeah. thing about Ghana mm. you can go to the club every single day yeah. every day yeah. I went out this weekend I went out Friday mm -hmm. Saturday Sunday Monday took a break Tuesday took a break. Yesterday was Ghana Independence. Yeah. Excuse to go out. Mm -hmm. I'm going out again on Friday. Mm. Ghana doesn't sleep. You can't do that in the UK. Sleep. No, you can't. Mm. You can't do that. Does that bring more joy to you as a person? You would say compared to the UK. A hundred percent. You can. You can be like. You could be going through something mm -hmm. at home. If you're in a car, and all of a sudden, let me just go out. Mm -hmm. And there's somewhere to go. Mm -hmm. You walk the streets of London. Mm -hmm. Everything will be closed. You'll, mm. you'll just walk back home. Yeah. Yeah. So you don't miss the UK at all? No. Really? The only thing that I miss mm. is online shopping. So it can get to you easy or... Yeah. Quick, yeah okay. And next day delivery. Yeah. That's the only thing that I miss. Yeah. That's, that's it. Oh, my friends and family. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> how, how are your, um, you know, your mom reacting to you? She, yeah. She calls me like twice a week telling mm. me to come home. Really, but the thing is, when I'm there, mm -hmm. like when I'm around, she's just not bothered. Yeah, it's just the fact that I'm just not there. Yeah, but when you're not there, they they care about you more. Than yeah, you. she calls me all the time, and I'm like, I don't. I sh mm. Maybe you should move here. Maybe. Maybe. What, what does she say when you say that? She said no. No. Interesting. Let's let's dive. But you you might have experienced some kind of challenges here in Ghana so far. What do you say personally? It's not with your husband. Your partner by Richie. You want him to be my husband so I, bad. Yeah, no, I keep, because that's how you guys lived on camera. You know how you, you live in it so you don't know how people portray it. Just, yeah. But from my view, watching you, it's like that's your your, your husband Aww, type shit. That's cute. <laughs> but um, you living alone, did you face this kind of challenges you, you, you faced similar to your partner? Uh, similar when you were with your partner? No. 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 The only the challenges that I face mm -hmm. in Ghana mm -hmm. is just the fact that, like, because I'm by myself, I have to do everything by myself. Mm -hmm. Before there was someone to, like, yeah. do the things that I didn't really want to do. Mm -hmm. Like, I recently had to learn how to top up my electricity. I never did that before. He mm -hmm. did that. Mm -hmm. Little things. Mm -hmm. I have to actually be the independent person that I said I wanted to be. Mm -hmm. Um, but apart from that, there's always someone that's willing to help you in Ghana for a price, small yeah. price to pay. Mm. Do you miss anything from your previous relationship? From my relationship? Me and him were very, very spontaneous together. Mm -hmm. So he was always like ready to do things that I wanted to do. I miss that because it was fun or like something would happen and we'd be thinking the same thing. We just look at each other and we're thinking the same thing. So I miss that. I feel like even now, like, if he was here, like, and we were just friends, we would still have, like, a good time. Because in the relationship, like, we, we were friends first, so. Aw, this is cute. Reminiscing. Mm -hmm. No, no, it's good. I, w I really want to be able, because people have watched your story and even made decisions to follow their partners down to Ghana or Africa because of the sacrifices you did you know what I'm saying did, I promise you wow. I know people who moved to Ghana because of love wow right so example people never believe that they could just you know move or embark on a journey with their partner because you know what I'm saying but seeing you do it kind of moved a lot of people mm. to be able to do it you I, know? Thi I think um, we definitely like proved 
a lot of people wrong because mm-hmm. like we're not like even though we're not together mm-hmm. a lot of the things that people were saying were like that like he's gonna run off and cheat and do all these things and like it's like he didn't do any of those things like the reason that I don't regret is because in the process everything that people were trying to warn me of like none of those things happen it is possible to actually have a genuine connection with someone that can allow you to just go wherever you want to go in the world Mm. I think what this experience taught me the most is that like the world is so big and we a lot of the times limit ourselves like I know that there's certain people that would never even leave like the town that we live in to live in a different city let alone a different country let alone a different continent and it just goes to show that like there's so much of this world to explore Mm. like you don't have to stay in one place Mm -hmm. and if you go to that place and you don't like it you can go back I came to Ghana I was here for two years my passport didn't burst into flames I went back Mm. and then I figured out I didn't want to be there and I'm back again like Mm -hmm. you're not tied to any one place Mm -hmm. and people need to stop seeing certain situations as failures like Mm -hmm. I said I was moving to Ghana some people said oh but you failed at moving to Ghana because you were only there for two years and I was like but first of all two years two years might not be a long time for you but a lot can happen in two years time and again like for you to see it as a failure means that you're limiting yourself Mm. you're you have decided that that amount of time is a failure as opposed to seeing it as this is tears of experience that Mm. I've gained Mm -hmm. because when I've come I've come back Mm. now and it's like I just know everywhere Mm. I know everywhere Mm -hmm. and I love that Mm -hmm. I don't feel like a tourist anymore Mm -hmm. you feel like you're you're yeah like I know everywhere Mm -hmm. I'm gonna start driving here this year really before I was scared but I'm tired of being an uber babe yeah I'm over it I'm I'm gonna start driving why are you tired of the uber I get so impatient like Mm. I want to if I want to go I just want to go I don't want to have to wait for someone. I don't want to have to... Like, some of them are so annoying. Mm-hmm. And some of them, they, they, they drive like they don't care about their lives. Really? Huh. They speed over speed. They over. really speed. There's mm-hmm. no rules when it comes to the speeding mm-hmm. thing. So I just want to... I want mm-hmm. my own car. So you, you, you're going to be in Ghana for good, you, you'd say? Yeah, obviously, like, like I said, I don't like to limit myself. Mm-hmm. So f- right now, mm-hmm. my plans are to be here for good. Mm-hmm. It doesn't mean that I'm never, ever going to leave the country. Mm-hmm. Because that's another thing that I missed out on. Like, in the two years that I was here, I didn't go anywhere else. Oh, no, 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 I did. I mean, the first year was lockdown. I I, I wasn't even thinking about travelling because I was so, like, wrapped up in Ghana that I didn't even think about, oh, my gosh, let me go to other countries and explore. Mm. So what I would do differently is I would treat Ghana, like, just like my base. I'm always going to come back to you. I can go to other places. I can do other things, but I'm always going to come back here. Mm. Until something changes, I don't know, something might change and I might say, I want to try Kenya, mm-hmm. I want to try South Africa, but for right now, for the foreseeable future, Ghana's home. I like that. Now, did you ever see yourself coming back together with him? No. It's done? Yeah. We're such good friends. Like It's done? It's, yeah. Hmm. You, you seem disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I really want to be sure. But like we are like we're such good friends that I'll probably go to his wedding and he'll probably come to mine. Oh, that's such a, I'm trying to get the headlight for you guys. <laughs> Amazing! Wow, wow. How much money do you come to Ghana with? Not a lot, you know. Thousand dollars. Like a thousand pounds. Thousand pounds. Yeah. And I spent most of it. Oh my gosh! Let me tell you what happened. Mm. So I came to Ghana, and then like on my second my second day I lost my phone in the club because on this drunk. trip yeah on the second day I lost my phone and I was by myself so so at the time I was staying in a hotel mm-hmm. because it was December like I came the first week of December it was December so everywhere was just extra expensive all the apartments were just because they knew tourists were coming so I just got myself a hotel Mm -hmm. and the plan was to um, stay in the hotel like go and look look for myself because I don't like to deal with agents and I don't want to pay the Airbnb prices so um, 
yeah, I lost my phone, which meant I couldn't rebook my hotel, which meant I had to pay in cash. And their cash rates were like double Airbnb. And because I was by myself, like, I couldn't even, oh, can I borrow your mm-hmm, phone? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I didn't have a phone for like two weeks. Really? Did they didn't kick you out of the apartment? I just kept paying every day. Wow. So I was just spending money. When mm-hmm. I first came here, I was going through money. Just last year? Yeah, last year. So you were at Afro- Afrochella? I didn't go to, I keep, you know, I've been in Ghana every year that mm-hmm. Afrochella's on and I always miss it. Mm-hmm. I need to go in next time. Really? You've never been? No, I've never been. That's crazy. I need to go. Mm. You know, if people are watching you right now, like your friends, family, what will you, you tell them about Ghana um, or Africa that they, you think they don't know and must know? That's a good question. Mm. There's so much more to Ghana mm. than what meets the eye. And Ghana is the perfect place to live how you want to live. Mm. Meaning, if you want to live a very humble life, very humble and affordable life, you can do that. I've done that. I did the whole cha cha. There was one point I didn't use Uber. I just got the cha cha everywhere. Really? That's how I learned my way around Ghana on the cha cha. Really? Yeah. So you can live a humble cha cha lifestyle. I would go to the market to get my my like food and stuff. Or if you want, if you want to be eating at San Pablo and you want to be going to, if you want to live bougie, mm. you can. Mm-hmm. If you want to drive a Range Rover and you want penthouse and you can like you can live how you want to live and what's amazing about Ghana is it will inspire you to want to live the best way that you possibly can because you will see real luxury you will see real innovation the way that people build their houses the way that people decorate their shops like you will see real creation I feel like in the UK things are very grey everything's the same everything's here you come you really see colour mm-hmm. you see designs mm-hmm. and it will inspire you so if you really really want to be inspired come to Ghana I feel you like, have a big heart you think? yeah I don't think that's it I feel like that's the first thing that people think of but I not to say that I don't have a big heart but before that I like I like the thrill of things mm-hmm. I like adventure I like a good plot twist. Mm. I like I like adventure and things that are new. That's what drives me. I can't do the boring, same old. Mm. Are you trying to say what I'm th- I'm thinking you're saying? Like what? The boring. Okay, never mind. What did you think I was gonna no, say? No, I thought you know. I think you're enjoying being single. What do you say? A hundred percent. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Did I answer that too quickly? <laughs> Have you been single? Oh. Being single in Ghana is not, it's like... Talk to you about it. Do you want me to be so honest with you? Yeah. I haven't paid for anything. Really? When I go out, I don't pay for anything. Yeah, laugh. <laughs> laugh. I don't pay for anything and I love it. Yeah. The men just pick up the it's check. It's fantastic. I love it. Mm. So what do, you, what do you say about it? Mm-hmm. I couldn't do this when I was in a relationship. When I was in a relationship, I had to spend his money, which mm-hmm. is like spending my money because his money is our money. Mm-hmm. So it's like, I might as well just buy it for myself. <laughs> but now you spend but somebody now, else's money. <laughs> now I get to spend other people's money. And you don't have to be economical about it. No. <laughs> at all. And I love that. Yeah. I love a crowd for that. There's always someone willing to spend money on you. Really? Yeah. What is it about? It's because obviously you're very pretty. But why do you think that is though? I don't know. The UK men don't do that. Oh, come on. You know, you, everyone's heard that they're stingy. Sorry, guys. The UK men are stingy. That's what I've heard. I didn't agree or but disagree. what do you think? <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Let's just be all, honest, man. All I will say is they're not as generous as African men. UK men are not as generous as African men based in Africa. Interesting. Interesting. Are you are you thinking of you know trying to date or you know a Ghanaian or African living on the continent? I feel like my husband is somewhere in Accra. Really? He might not be from Ghana though, but he's somewhere in Accra. Mm. Basically, from what from what I've been experiencing so mm. far, just going on dates, mm-hmm. 
I like what I see. Mm-hmm. I like how men treat women here. Not by the way, mm-hmm. this is this is nothing to do with with my my previous situation mm-hmm. because the reason why I feel like my standards are so high is because he set certain standards that mm-hmm. I just can't. He's nothing like UK men. Mm-hmm. He's more like the men in Africa because in the UK, I feel like there's some guys that they don't even want to give you... They wouldn't even want to... Like the 50-50 thing. Ugh. When they go on dates, they want you to pick up 50% of the check. That thing has only ever happened to me once. Really? And I never spoke to him ever again. Why? Because... Isn't that what the UK women want? 50-50? Yeah. Like, I'm an independent woman. Who's... I don't know who's spreading these lies. That's what we think. Do you know, like... I don't, I don't know why women are doing this to us. Mm-hmm. This whole... F- we want to be independent... Me, I'll speak for myself. I don't want to be independent. Mm. I can be independent. I feel like it's very good to be able to be independent. But I don't want to be independent. Mm. I, I don't want to be an alpha anything. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want any of that. I want someone... I, I just want to be able to close my eyes and someone just leads me to be able to see. Mm. And Ghanaian men are doing that for you. How many dates have you been on? I, I don't know. This month? This month? <laughs> <laughs> We're like seven days in. <laughs> wow. Um, no, nah, I've, I've been on a few dates. Mm-hmm. Another thing, I feel like mm-hmm. men here are very vocal. Like, if they think that you're pretty, they will tell you that you're yeah. pretty. Mm-hmm. This How does that do to your self-confidence compared to the UK? <sighs> my, my confidence is, like, mm-hmm. here. Mm-hmm. It's crazy. I mean, I'm a confident person anyways, but it's yeah. nice to hear it. Really? You don't find that annoying, like, or too... For someone to tell me that I'm... Yeah, all the time. Like, Madame, you are so pretty. And you hear no. that? Answer, no? Even the ones that I like, Beyonce. Yeah. Uh, uh, Nicki Minaj. No problem, I don't mind it. Really? Yeah. Interesting. I have no problem with compliments. Would, would you advise fellow, you know, women, diaspora girls to just come to Ghana and find out uh, uh, Mr. Mr. Wright? I know we're being positive about Ghana and all, mm. but one thing that I've been realizing, like 70% of the men who try and speak to me and like ask me out on dates are married. I'm like, you look married. And they're like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's not like that. And I'm like, it's like why are you speaking <laughs> to me when you're married? So you have to be careful because mm. loads of people are married here. Mm. Most people are married here. And you get married men coming to you all the time? All the time. What do you say to them? I don't, I don't date married men. You don't do that? Karma's real. Calm, okay. So someone's wife is going to be preying on you and stuff like that. Karma's real. I mean, I've, I've, I've seen so many diaspora girls try to avoid a married men but always ended up with a married man and but, later find out that they are married. No, yeah, and you can't help those situations. I feel like we've all Because been in the ones who are well-to-do. We've all accidentally been in one of those situations. Mm. And you just hope that you haven't caught any feelings and Tell me yourself. the best day you've ever been on and then the worst in Ghana so far. The best day? Yeah. So we went, we mm-hmm. went to dinner. Mm-hmm. Um, where did we go to? Number 10. Number 10. Which is really cute. Yeah. And he ordered... Like everything. No, I'm like thinking. he ordered everything. Mm-hmm. Like he was like, Oh, I want you to try mm-hmm. all of it. Mm-hmm. It was amazing. It was fantastic. I've I ate so much. Mm-hmm. And then we went to um we went to her lounge, mm-hmm. we were doing shisha. And then we ended up at the club. That was a great day for me, because I like to be outside. Mm-hmm. Worst day, mm-hmm. sorry, to add what makes a great day, pick me up taking me home you know all the nice things you guys don't do that come on no. oh my gosh let me tell you not recently but mm. like basically like <laughs> when I lived here before so t- like 2021 mm. um, basically I met this I'm, I met like a group of guys and girls at, like uh, um, from back right I shouldn't even mention it just in case <laughs> go ahead don't hold it back man don't hold it back or it could have been Bloom Bar. It was a loud, it was like a bar. Maybe Twist. Could have been Twist. It yeah. was one of those places. We were having a great time, right? And one of the guys, like, I was really hitting off with, like, we were, like, singing, we were, like, drinking, we were having a good time. Like, I was vibing with everyone, but me and this guy, we were really vibing. So um, he asked for my snap, and I was like, yeah, yeah, sure, you can have my snap. And he said that... Um, 
they're doing they're going on like a, a beach mm-hmm. day the, the, the next day and that like I should come um and like it wasn't it wasn't like a date date situation but he was like oh like come like he wanted me to meet him first and then we all go together right so I was like cool no problem um I took my dog I had a dog I took my dog and uh, Gosh, this is gonna make me sound safe. No, go ahead, go ahead. So you know, like when you're at when you're in the club, like mm-hmm. people like to stand on like the tables and the chairs and all that stuff, and you'll be having a good time. Obviously, like we had been standing, jumping, jumping, guys. When I got out of my Uber and he was standing there, I was literally looking down on him. He's short. He was so short, and I hadn't realized because he was standing like on some <laughs> some table. <laughs> Was he a midget? No, like he was petite. Wow. I was like, oh my God. Did you, did you say that in front of him? No, what no, no. It? No, no, no. So, like, oh gosh, there were literally tears in my eyes. I was trying so hard not to laugh. I was like, how have I got myself in this situation? <laughs> anyway, I ended up saying, like, my dog looks hot. Like, it looks like he's over here. And I think I need to take him home. I'm like, oh, my gosh, Rico, are you okay? Oh, my gosh, we have to go. We ended up leaving. I was like, if he's fine, like, I'll come back and we'll go. Wow. I never spoke to him ever again. I literally deleted him off Snap, everything. You like, you don't like short men? What if the money's looking good? I, I don't care how no. long. I don't care how long, how tall the money is. Really? So what, what's, like, your height, your... your Height preference. What my like my ideal height? Yeah. Okay, I don't have an ideal height per se, but I like to wear heels. So okay. if you're taller than me in heels, then we're good. Mm. But me and this guy, like, I was literally looking down on him. Really? What if the person is the same height as you? Mm. Nah. Like you know, mm-hmm. you know when like you're younger, mm-hmm. I feel like you can make like you can let certain things slide. But it's like, if I've waited this long in my season of singleness, I need to get what I want. Mm, facts. Otherwise, what's the point? Period. <laughs> like, you know, when, yeah. you know when you're hungry, like you're really hungry, mm-hmm. it's like, there's no point just wasting it on, on, mm-hmm. on bread. Mm. Like, have a meal. Like, have what you actually want. Mm. Just let me ask you this question before I wrap up. Will you say you've moved on completely? If yes, do you think your partner has... I have moved on completely. Your ex partner. I, I think he has. Mm. I think I think I made it hard for him to previously, not on purpose, but. What do you think you did that made it hard for him to? I'm so like sometimes it's like I would treat him like a boyfriend, but without the boyfriend perks. So I still ask him to do things for me or like oh, please, can you help me with this? Or like, so it's like, how can someone move on when they're giving me their attention? Mm. So, yeah, I think he has moved on now. So if you see him like with a girl on YouTube channel talking about whatever, you'll never be... I'd be so happy for him, honestly. Swear down. Promise. Interesting. Interesting. Like, I spoke to him on Valentine's Day... And I was like, what did you do? Because he, like, he's no, like... that will fuck somebody up. Don't call me on Valentine's Day if you're, you're my ex. No, but I was asking him about what he had done for... You shouldn't ask. Why? That's going to be difficult for somebody to move on. No, but he's already <laughs> because, moved on. Really? And I, yeah, he's mm. moved on. He's fine. Mm. And, um... Because I, I talk to him about, like, guys Everything. that I speak to. Really? Yeah. That's like, touching. Don't do that. No, it's not, because he tells me as well. Oh, Okay. It's mutual. You guys are having a different, a whole different relationship. I feel, I've like, never seen I feel like our relationship is so hard to explain. Like, yeah. if I get into a relationship, I don't know how I'm going to explain yeah. our situation. Yeah. Because we're such good friends mm-hmm. and people will think, oh, that means you're going to get back together. But yeah. we're not. Mm. So I reckon your friends have heard you say the same thing again. And yeah, everyone's tired. Like, mm. even, like, he's cool with my family. I'm cool with his family. Like, mm. everyone. It's just so, Manka and E is not coming back. No, so actually, the whole jail aspect, prison aspect, I don't know about you, yeah. but I find that part very interesting, like the whole experience, mm-hmm. because most of us are never going to go to prison. Yeah. So 
he basically turned our old channel into talking about like reforming, changing relationships. Basically, kind of like what we're talking mm-hmm. about. Mm-hmm. That's what happens on the Mankin E channel now. Mm. So you gave you this. You what you created that channel, right? Yeah. So why did you decide to give that YouTube channel to him? Because I still get some of the profit. Oh okay. <laughs> Really? Everybody wins. Yeah. I Everybody see. wins. I see. What advice would you give to people um, in any kind of relationship, complicated relationship, toxic, toxic relationship, that they want to be able to move on or whatever? So, like, the person's in a toxic relationship? It could be toxic. It could be complicated. It could be a situationship. Um, obviously, you've been, you know, in and out a couple of times and finally decided that, listen, it's the end for me and I'm moving on. If someone is stuck in something like that and you have an advice, what would that advice be? I, I feel like, obviously, everybody, everybody treats um, like moving on from a situation differently. Mm-hmm. Me personally, out of sight, out of mind. If, it's not, if, I'm, if I see it every day, it's going to be very hard for me to break away from that situation. But literally, out of sight, mm-hmm. out of mind. Mm-hmm. I'm not thinking about it. I'm not... I'm not like I'm allowing myself to heal while it's not right in my face. I like that. Now, thank you so much for sharing that. Let's come to Ghana a little bit. What would you say are some businesses you'd be able to identify it here while being here that you think some people should try to capitalize on? That? Okay, so one of them is something that I'm actually gonna do. So yeah. I'm not gonna tell you yet. Mm. You're gonna have to you have can me tell back me behind camera. You're gonna have to have me back for that. Yeah. But I think find something mm-hmm. that people need. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, you can have a luxury car business and some people are going to want luxury cars, but it's not a necessity. Mm-hmm. Find something that is somewhat of a necessity to at least a vast range of people and you'll make money. Mm. Consumable goods? Pardon? Consumable. Yeah, food, mm-hmm. hair, transport. It's hair necessity. For women, yeah, 100%. Really? Yeah, 100%. Transport. People need to get to places. Mm-hmm. Maybe you... Like Uber? Maybe you will discover the next upgraded version of a cha mm. mm. Interesting. Or right. if you do have a final message to the people, what would that message be? I feel like if you're going to take away anything from what I've said, mm-hmm. take away the fact that life is honestly too short to not try new things, mm-hmm. go new places, meet new people, explore, fall in love, fall out of love, date, spend people's money. I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> but just enjoy mm-hmm. yourself. Don't take yourself too seriously. Mm-hmm. Like, nothing's promised. Mm-hmm. Just make sure you're doing what feels right for you mm-hmm. and you'll enjoy yourself. How do people find you? Me? Yeah. So... Obviously, I'm from Cameroon. Mm-hmm. So, Instagram, Miss Cameroon. Mm-hmm. Instagram, Miss Cameroon. YouTube, Miss Cameroon. On YouTube, I just talk about my experiences, share. And, um, yeah, Miss Cameroon is everywhere. Mm-hmm. You'll find me. And you're single, right? Very single. So, those watching, you know what to do. All right, thank you so much for being on the show uh, and sharing your story. Thank I you I really for appreciate me. it. Thank you. All right, so without further ado, let's say bye-bye to the people watching. All right, peace out. Bye.